Good morrow everyone, Silvershire here, and now that the final DLC character for what is likely the final Super Smash Bros. game has been released, 20 years of predictions and desires, some achieved and some tantalizingly out of reach, have come to an end. As Masahiro Sakurai takes a well-deserved break, it's time to take a look back at this miraculous game and appreciate the hard work and dedication that brought it to life. Just kidding, it's time to do what the internet does best, criticize! Oh, Sakurai thinks he's so great just because he brought together the most iconic characters in gaming history for an easy-to-pick-up yet competitively deep platform fighter? Well, I have 300 subscribers on YouTube, so checkmate. That's right, this is my 300 subscriber special, and it's kicking off a brand new series, Armchair Game Design, where I pretend to know more about making games than the people who make games. In this video, I'm going to be discussing one change that I would make to almost every single fighter in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Some of these will be purely cosmetic, some of these will be purely mechanical, and some will be somewhere in between. You better be taking notes, Sakurai. I expect to see all of these in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate 2 and Knuckles featuring Dante from the Double May Cry series. For Mario, I would simply make his footstools deal damage. Considering bouncing off enemies' heads is his primary method of attacking in his home series, it really surprises me that this isn't already a thing. My change to Donkey Kong would also be a reference to his home series, but it would be a more significant adjustment to his moveset. I would replace his side special, the headbutt, with a barrel throw that functions as a slow but powerful projectile. This would remove his ability to bury opponents, which would make his slower attacks harder to land, but I think that having a ranged attack would more than make up for it. There are a lot of changes I'd like to make to the three links, which will maybe be its own video one day, but if I were to choose just one thing for Adult Link, it would be the inclusion of his paraglider from Breath of the Wild. Ideally, it would allow him to slow his descent by holding the jump button, like Princess Peach, but it could also just be a reskin of his up special. This isn't really about rebalancing him, it's just about adding a fun nod to his home game that further differentiates him from the other links. Without a doubt, the Morph Ball is one of Samus' most iconic abilities, but in Smash, it's relegated to a purely cosmetic dodge animation and a brief appearance during her down special. I'd like to replace her down special with a full transformation into the Morph Ball. While in this form, she could press the B button to drop a bomb as per usual, but she could also roll around the stage at increased speed. The smaller hitbox would obviously make her harder to hit, so maybe she should launch more easily in this form to compensate. As an Echo Fighter, the Morph Ball rework would apply to Dark Samus as well, but I also want to give her a unique gimmick to further differentiate her from Samus. Without getting too deep into Metroid lore, mainly because I don't know it that well, Dark Samus is a being made from Phazon, a radioactive, mutagenic substance that has been dubbed the Great Poison. So, I would make Dark Samus' energy-based attacks deal less base damage, but inflict a debilitating status effect. The simplest method would simply be for these attacks to deal damage over time, but they could be more of a long-term cumulative thing, where exposure to these attacks fills up a corruption bar that weakens the enemy when maxed out. My next change is a lot simpler. Yoshi's tongue should be a tether grab. It just makes sense, and it would help him out in his weakest area, which is his recovery. For Fox and Falco, we're getting a little more technical. I think that their up special should be swapped. In general, Fox is faster, has better movement on the ground, and prefers multi-hit attacks, while Falco is stronger, has better movement in the air, and prefers single-hit attacks. Yet their up specials run completely counter to these identities. Switching the properties of Firefox and Firebird would help solidify their respective roles. And now for our first purely cosmetic change. While in her Pika Libre costume, Pikachu should have a unique final smash based on her burst attack from Pokémon Tournament. This would be a little more difficult to implement than Cloud's alternate Final Smash, since Pikachu's isn't usually a cutscene, but there are ways to make it work. Luigi is also getting a purely cosmetic change. I would replace his yellow and dark green ult with Builder Luigi from Super Mario Maker 2. Since Mario gets his Builder outfit, this seems like a no-brainer. Captain Falcon is getting the smallest change so far, because his moveset is pretty solid and there's not a lot of references that can be drawn from his home series. All I would do is give him a unique voice line for his final smash, Maybe he could say Falcon Drive or Falcon Smash. Speaking of Final Smashes, Jigglypuffs is weird. It's not even based on anything from her home series aside from the vague concept of being a balloon. I would replace it with one of her new moves from Pokemon Sword and Shield, namely Misty Explosion. This is a fairy type move that basically sets off a pretty pink atom bomb, which seems pretty perfect for her character. Know who else has a sucky Final Smash? Peach. 
I'm going to keep the general concept of healing herself and putting enemies to sleep, but I'm going to make it more interactive and reference her abilities from Super Mario RPG. Upon activating it, she would use heart magic to heal herself. She would then use the Sleepy Time spell, which causes sheep to fall from the sky in a manner similar to PK Starstorm. Any fighter hit by a sheep will instantly fall asleep. This would be more fair to her opponent, since there's potential for counterplay, but it would also benefit Peach by removing the need to collect fruit and being equally effective at any range. For Daisy, I'm sort of stretching the definition of one change by giving her a series of buffs and nerfs that would work towards a single goal. In the Mario series, Daisy is typically the tougher and sportier of the two, so I think her movement speed, damage, and knockback should all be increased. However, she should lose the ability to float, because outside of Smash Bros, she has never been shown to share this ability with Peach. I would also make her just a tad heavier. These changes would make her significantly more aggressive than Peach without the need to alter her moveset too much. I'd also like her to have a unique final smash, but that would definitely count as more than one change, so I'll leave it at that. Bowser is getting a much simpler buff. I would make it so that tapping the neutral special instead of holding it would shoot a low, long-range fireball, which is his signature attack in the Mario series. I know that giving projectiles to the big heavyweight bruisers runs the risk of muddying their character archetypes, but so long as the moves are relatively situational, I think it's fine. Four of Ice Climber's ults have Popo in the lead, and the other four have Nana in the lead. This works well enough, but since Pokemon Trainer and Pyra Slash Mithra give you the option to choose your starting character separately from choosing your ult, I don't see why the same couldn't be applied to these two. Fellow YouTuber and friend of the channel P Jiggles pointed out that if she charges up her needles but then doesn't throw them, she continues to hold on to them. So I was thinking, how cool would it be if these needles increased the damage of her punches, similar to Vega's claws from Street Fighter? I think a great way to further differentiate Lab Coat Mario from Overall's Mario would be to alter the trajectory of his neutral special. I would make the pills travel in an arc, sort of like the Belmont's axes, as a reference to the way they're thrown in the Dr. Mario games. This might sound counterintuitive, but hear me out. Pichu only has two moves that are totally different from Pikachu. The first is Up Smash, which makes sense because Pichu doesn't have a big tail to attack with like Pikachu. But the second is Neutral Aerial, which seems like a totally arbitrary difference. Normally I'm all for differentiating the clones and echoes from each other, but I want the differences to have a purpose, and there's no reason for Pichu not to have Pikachu's Neutral Aerial. Marth's Blue Ult is based on his appearance from the very first Fire Emblem game, which is cool in theory, but it's super similar to his default color scheme. I would replace it with an ult inspired by his Altaian Groom costume, which appears in both Fire Emblem Warriors and Fire Emblem Heroes. For Lucina, I would replace her up special with Soaring Slash, which is Krom's up special. As well as further differentiating her from Marth, this would be a nice connection to her father. Since Soaring Slash is the only attack of his that isn't taken straight from Roy, it would sort of be like him passing on his signature move to his daughter. When it comes to Young Link, everyone talks about how cool it would be if the masks from Majora's Mask were worked into his moveset, and yeah, but I think that there is a far more glaring omission from this character. Where is the Ocarina of Time? It is by far Link's most iconic paraphernalia other than his sword and shield, but it has no representation in Smash whatsoever. I would rectify this by replacing his up taunt with him playing the Ocarina. It would be especially cool if there were multiple songs he could cycle through like Sora's up taunt. Ideally, I would like Ganondorf to be almost entirely reworked and his old moveset given to someone like Black Shadow instead, but that would definitely fall outside the scope of this video, so instead I'm just going to buff one of his existing attacks. Considering his Ocarina of Time boss fight, he should really be able to deflect projectiles, so I would apply this trait to his forward smash. For Mewtwo, I would simply like to see his other Mega Evolution worked into his final smash somehow. Like Cloud, it could depend on his selected ult, or it could just be totally random. During Krom's final smash, there should be a small chance that he says, It's high noon. I think a neat cosmetic change for Mr. Game & Watch would be to alter his swimming animation so that he's wearing the diving helmet from Octopus. Meta Knight is also getting a purely cosmetic change, but his is much more substantial. Since his 7th ult is based on Galactonite, I would replace his bat-like wings with feathered wings while wearing this costume. Zero Suit Samus is getting a much simpler change than her armored counterpart, a cosmetic alteration to her pink ult. Since this is based on her sprite from the original Metroid, I think it would be neat if she was a brunette like in that game. Alternatively, she could have green hair as a reference to the Justin Bailey cheat code, but that might just look weird on her Smash model. Wow, this video has been going on for like 10 minutes and I'm not even halfway done. I think that means it's time for a LIGHTNING, Lightning round. ROUND! Wario's motorcycle should be a different color based on his selected ult. 
Snake's box is great, but we don't need it for all three of his taunts. One of them could be replaced with him looking shocked as an exclamation mark appears above his head alongside the signature sound effect. I would replace Ike's down smash with one big circular swipe to differentiate him from the other sword boys. One of Pokemon Trainer's ults should include a shiny Charizard. I would probably replace the gray one, but it could also work for the blue one. Sonic Side Special should be replaced with a quick damaging dash based on the boost from modern Sonic games. King Dedede's hammer should be gray when using his monochromatic ult, like Sora's Keyblade. Olimar's ult should function like Heroes or Steve's. Let's get Louie, Brittany, Charlie, and maybe even President in here. As many others have said, Rob's fuel should be indicated by a meter next to his portrait, because it's really hard to see in a hectic game. To differentiate Toon Link from Young Link, I would replace his final smash with Hurricane Spin, during which he would have control over Link's movement and damage enemies in an AoE. Pac-Man should have his classic death sound like Mega Man does. Whipping with Robin's sword should not cost her ability. That's how Steve works, after all. It would be fun if Bowser Jr.'s down special randomly produced the variations of Mecha Koopa from Super Mario Maker 2. The Blast of Mecha Koopa could deal increased damage, and the Zap of Mecha Koopa could stun enemies. Ryu's purple ult should be replaced with an evil Ryu ult. Cloud's intro animation should be him riding in on a Chocobo. If Incineroar lands his side special on the air, instead of the Alolan Whip, he should do a Pile Driver. Hero should not be called Hero. His ult should have their respective names, like Steve's and Bowser Jr.'s do. There should be an option to use motion controls for Min Min's basic attacks. Would it be practical? No. Would it be fun? Definitely. <sighs> Whew, okay, alright, only three more to go. I think I can slow down now. There are a lot of food options in Minecraft, so I'm not sure why Smash Bros. decided to limit Steve's diet to steak. During his side taunt, final smash, and windscreen, I think it would be fun if his snack was randomized. Maybe we could even throw some beverages into the mix. If you watched my Kazuya videos, which, let's face it, you did, that's why like two-thirds of you are on this channel, you probably already know where I'm going with this. Kazuya's black and red ult is based on his son, Jin Kazama. So I think it would be neat if, like Jin, his laser blasts and lightning effects were red while wearing this costume. And lastly, for Sora, I would add Donald and Goofy to his victory poses. I know that Nintendo couldn't do this for legal reasons, but dang it, this is my hypothetical list. And that is gonna do it for this video. Let me know in the comments down below what changes you would make to the Super Smash Bros. Ultimate roster. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed, and until next time, I bid thee farewell.